Last night, which was supposed to be my last night in Jing to Jen, my new friend Yujia asked me if I could extend my trip. He wanted to give me a personal guided tour of some of the places that make up his life in the city. How could I refuse? So let's pick up the story at 8.30 a.m. on September 1st, my unplanned second day here in Jing to Jen. And we're riding through a very typical Chinese factory area, which is uh, set up with residences right next to restaurants. Everything, everything in China is self-contained. Uh, it's not like the business commute that you might see in America where people are traveling uh, long distances to go to work. A lot of times workers live at the factory. He gave me a beautiful uh, China bowl. Um, the, the wall thickness of this bowl is so thin, it's like paper thin. I'm, I'm really afraid that wherever I put it in the, in the trike, it's gonna break until I get the nanchang when I can transfer uh, some things to Annie and kind of offload it to the office. First things first, it's the morning. He wanted to take me out and give me some some uh, traditional uh, Jing to Jen, uh, Jiangxi style breakfast. Uh, so let's see what that entails. Okay. <laughs> It's not about the thickness of the meat. A lot of times, uh, there's a lot of picking. You're picking at the bones. A lot of my friends would much rather have a chicken wing than a chicken breast, whereas we like the chicken, uh, the chicken breast because it's a solid meat. I got some in my eyes. <laughs> As I worked through my breakfast, I started to wonder how the day was going to unfold for me. I had no idea what my friend had planned, and I was really at his whim. Our first stop of the day turned out to be his place of work, a special needs school in Jingdezhen. <laughs> Oh, come and boogie can. Okay. Oh. Oh, the team that the mouth can't speak. He is just using the language. Wow. Ah, using the language. Is that the language of the Lungya people? Lungya people is not hearing. Not hearing. In the mouth he can't speak. He's telling me that uh, this school is, I think, a, uh, a special school for people with disabilities. In the building over here, it's, it's people that can't see. But in these buildings here, it's people that can't hear or speak. Since my laptop is in the shop, I only have my SD cards and my CF cards. And those are quickly filling up. I almost have none left. So I asked him if I could have access to a computer so that I could <laughs> dump all my cards onto, uh, onto my hard drive and he said yes, so this is a great opportunity. Otherwise I'm going to run out of space and I'm going to run out of story. Traveling without a plan requires a little bit of patience and an openness to follow vague, um, vague information. It's an interesting insight into uh, Jing De Jen and maybe I can get an idea of how lifestyle works here. It's a little haphazard. After we left the school, he brought me to some particularly interesting locations for learning about the buying of fine china. 
As I explained in the last chapter, Jing De Zhen is all about Chinese China. It seems like you can't go far in any direction without running into exquisitely crafted porcelain and ceramic. So together, we visited some shops lined with vases and cups of every shape and size, and a museum tracing the history of the art through the ages. Up until this point, I had seen the sculpting, molding, and crafting of ceramics in Jing De Zhen, but I wanted to go one step further. I wanted to see the process from start to finish, where the material is taken from its base components through to the exquisite creations sold throughout the city. Yu Jie knew just the place I needed to visit. Now on the south side of Jing De Zhen lies a place called Sambao. Sambao is like an international ceramic workshop. Um, and it's one of the special locations here in Jing De Zhen. And it was recommended that I come here. So uh, let's take a look. Sambao was created by foreigners Jackson Lee and Wayne Higby. The place mixes Western and Chinese influences together to form a sanctuary for artists crafting Chinese china. Yeah. <laughs> so introduce yourself, who you are. Oh, my name is Allison. Okay. You can call me Allison. All right, yeah. nice to meet you, Allison. Uh, Sambao is Jackson built here in 1998. Okay. His teacher come here and find this place and come out and came out an idea, uh, create an international workshop. Okay. Uh, we we call uh, the residency program. Mm. We we accept uh, in uh, invite some person artist to come here to do their own ceramic mm. and they bring their ideas to here and they also learn the traditional Chinese Methods. method. Do you offer an opportunity for an artist to stay here and live here for a little while and then like this? Yeah, that's yeah. what we do here. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, they will come here for more than one month and stay here to, in the workshop and uh, then they do their ceramic. How many how many people are staying here right now at this moment? Uh, this moment only have two. Only it's two. Not, uh, yeah. And where are they and, from? Uh, Holland. Holland. Yeah. And where there where are they living? Where where's the residence? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Rooms here can be rented for twenty four hundred RMB a week, including meals and access to the workshop and kiln. So if you're an artist that specializes in making ceramic and pottery, you can live here for a month or more. The facility is built on the backbone of three traditional Jing De Zhen Chinese village houses, and it comes complete with kitchen, coffee shop, living spaces, and creative centers. When you are here, you are in a place that is geared only to encourage your own creativity. Every nook and cranny of this place is peaceful and inspiring. in the pottery material factory where they're making the ceramic material that will in turn make all those beautiful pots and, and dishes and things that we see in those museums. It's very interesting. First, they take the ceramic stone, which is like a white stone, looks kind of chalky. And then this machine here is working on, on nature. Water is powering it. It's pulverizing the rock, and it pulverizes the rock into a very fine powder. Then they move that powder into this basin, where I think it sips out some of the large chunks, and, and it kind of moistens the material. It moves through a couple of different stages. Here it actually gets really muddy. The water starts to soak out of it and it becomes a little bit more solid. And then they take it over here and they just 
Oh, it's just nice clean mud. I just want to jump in it. <laughs> and once that starts to dry, it gets to a certain point that they form bricks. And those bricks are lined up against the back wall here. And those bricks, they can use to add a little bit more material. It's not quite the perfect ceramic material. It's almost there. They're gonna mix it with some extra stuff and then it'll become perfect fine grade ceramic in order to go into those pots and beautiful items that we see all over the place in Jing De Jen. This is really cool to actually see how this stuff is made. During my tour, Yu Jia received a call and unfortunately had to return to his office for an important meeting. This ended my visit to Sambao and left me once again on my own in Jingdujian. Now, I had the quick and dirty tour of this place, but if you're interested in more information, just check out Sambao, uh, Sambao Gallery, right? What's the website for this? Sambao Ceramic Art Institute and see more information. And if you're a artist with some great ideas and you don't mind no air conditioning, this might be a, a nice place to spend a month out of your life. I sure would be totally interested in doing it myself. But I've got to ride my bike around the world. The eternal struggle of uh, being a foreigner living in China is being able to order food at a restaurant. Luckily, I can speak just enough to say what type of meat and what type of vegetable I'm interested in. And this place, which is uh, called Mao Zhe, is a very special restaurant in Jingdezhen. And I was told if I came here, I better stop at Mao Zhe. Uh, so I was able to tell the waitress that my friend, Wada Penyo Gaosua, told me uh, to come here. And that Rubua Nio Ega Tibia Tsai, with you have special food, Nike Gewa. Uh, so basically, I said, I don't know what I want, but you need to tell me what I want because I know that you have special food here. And she understood exactly. And she picked out two items, one vegetable, one meat, and we'll see what comes out because I have no idea what it's gonna be. On a side note, uh, if you look up at the ceiling here, you'll see the light fixtures are uh, particularly unique. And it's only fitting that in Jing the Jen, the restaurant that epitomizes the flavor of Jing the Jen would have light fixtures that are basically uh, China, porcelain China. Um, and so, I mean, I'm not very surprised. Everything in this city is in one way or another associated with porcelain. Okay, so the food has arrived and uh, it looks pretty good. I've got uh, uh, ramen lettuce, uh, but it's got a really good butter sauce to it. And it's kind of funny, when I first came to China, I tried to introduce some of my friends to the idea of a salad. And uh, they would say, okay, what is it made with? And I say, lettuce and carrots and vegetables and broccoli and, and dressing. And they would say, okay, uh, then when do you saute it? <laughs> when do you cook it? The idea of eating fresh vegetables is not really widely um, practiced in China. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the quality of uh, vegetables and therefore needing that cooking process in order to cook out anything that might be negative or bad for you, but uh, it's just kind of funny to have that conversation and try and explain that salads can be healthy. The next dish that we have is beef. It's really good. It's not too spicy, uh, which is 
really good for me because I was worried I was gonna get something spicy today and I don't want to ride on the road and maybe get some explosive situations if you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna leave tomorrow and I'm gonna do another long day and I'm gonna head to a city called Yugon and from Yugon I go to Nanchang and uh, Nanchang I'll take a little break <laughs> Kids are always curious and uh, in China a uh, foreigner is called Wai Guaren. Wai Guo is outside of uh, China. Uh, and the kids especially, because they got no inhibitions. They're always asking, are you foreigner? What do I look like? 